Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I'm your friend Abhijit Shaktivel, and in this video, we are going to start creating our Playwright Type Script Framework. Right, this is going to be an interesting uh, series, so I hope you will enjoy this one. Right, uh, so on a high level, uh, so these are some of the topics that I want to cover as part of this framework creation. So we're going to automate both web and API tests. We are not going to just restrict ourselves in automating just login tests. Um, we are going to, you know, create a little bit lengthy tests and see how we could handle them. Um, you know, how we want to handle dynamic locators, how we could use them in page layers, uh, how we could write meaningful assertions and all that, and how we could use dynamic data using Falso. Again, you could use other libraries like Faker, but then I, I really like Falso, so I want to use that particular thing. Again, I want to also uh, cover whether you want to use page object model with Playwright or not. I'm going to give you three different options, how we could structure your uh, test uh, with POEM, without POEM, and then using a little bit of uh, page layers for just maintaining your locators. So we, I will cover all that thing in detail. So it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, my personal preference is not to use POEM, just record the test, uh, you know, uh, improvise the locators, you are good to go. As simple as that, right? And then, uh, we're going to see uh, ESLint, Prettier. Uh, we're going to add these things for, for our needs. I will cover what is ESLint, what is Prettier, what is ASCII, the pre-commit hook, why we are going to use that, uh, for what purpose we are going to use that, and uh, how we're going to handle dynamic locators. Um, we'll also have GitHub Actions workflow, uh, which we could trigger on PR to main. Um, and also, we could uh, understand how we could handle uh, multiple environments. Let's say you want to run our test on development, staging, and and other environments. How we could handle them with with just passing one variable, right? So we're gonna do all of this. And apart from that, we will also see how we could store our secrets if we have any. Uh, and then, if possible, I'll also cover how we could use Zod to perform schema validations. Uh, yeah, a lot of things are in mind, but this is basic set of stuff. If you want me to include something else, please do that. Uh, leave that in the comment section. Again, guys, please do not expect me to use Cucumber. Please do not expect me to use uh, uh, Excel sheets for drawing um, tests. These are all something that you want to avoid because you know you will rather spend time on solving the problem with those things instead of solving the real customer problems. Uh, so yeah, without wasting a lot of time, let's uh, you know uh, open the IntelliJ. So uh, I'm gonna create um, a new new framework. So new project, and this let's let's call it as playwright. PS Orange HRM. Right. I thought of using Amazon, uh, but then you could use anything with your your choice. Um, yeah. So now it it created a basic. Uh, thing for us. I'll remove all these things and let's do npm init playwright right at the rate latest. So this is going to bring all the necessary stuff that we need. So we need TypeScript. Um, so I want to use e2e slash test. The reason I'm not using test is because test is very generic. We do not know whether it is a unit test, service test, integration test. Contractors, we do not know what it is, so I want to just use e2e slash test. Yes, I want to have a default workflow, and then I want to, I will change it like based on my needs. Um, and then um, it's asking whether you want to install Playwright browsers. I don't want to because I already have them in my machine, so I don't need them. So, yeah, it's all good. Let's do this. And we have node modules, playwright config.ts. Um, and guys, one important thing that I want to do is get rid of all these commands because I find, found them, you know, a little irritating. But then it's just a personal choice. You you want to have them, could have them. Um, yeah, I also don't want to run for all these browsers, right? So in my case, I just don't need these things. I'll just remove it for now. Like I don't want to have them. Um, and just remove it. If you want, we can add it later. Like these are all stuffs that I feel 
is too much of noise. Let's remove all these things, right? This looks good now. And uh, there are tests inside, uh, test examples um, also inside this. I don't need these things. Let's remove them. Um, there is example.spec.ts. Let's just check if our project is working fine. So I'll just do merit test, hyphen, 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 just to make sure um, it's running the default test. Yeah, default test is working. So the tests are working. So let's not worry about this anymore. Let's remove it. And uh, yeah, all looks good so far. And the one thing what we want to do is uh, we want to create the test and I'm going to use the uh, Orange Charam website. So this is the website. So people who follow me really know uh, about this website, but this is just a demo website that you could use for our practice. Uh, this is the URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first record the test. Again, guys, this is a secret uh, uh, mantra. So you can always leverage Playwright to record the test for you. It's going to create a lot of wonderful locators. You don't have to spend any sort of time um, uh, in, in generating this uh, locators, you know, writing a lot of awake statements and all that. So this is thing that you want to do. Just record the test, improvise the locators, you are good to go. That's it. So I, I run this MPX Playwright code gen and I just load this particular URL. So you can also see my test is also getting recorded here. And I'm going to just do my basic stuff, right? So admin, um, and then I do admin one, two, three. We will remove certain, uh, you know, irrelevant statements from here later, but then we don't have to worry now. So what I want to do is I want to cl just click on this PIM menu, uh, click on add employee. And I want to generate some dynamic names. For now, I hot code some names. Um, and then this one is this. I want to generate some random numbers. And then I'll just click on save. So I want to also validate this. That's it. So now, um, you know, that's all I want to do. Let's stop the recording and see here. So it generated some tests for me. Uh, the font size is a little small. Let's copy this and uh, let's go here. Let's cancel this. We don't want this anymore. Uh, go to the test, uh, create a new file. Uh, and before that, what you can do is you can also uh, add a directory. Uh, you can call it as, let's say, add employee, uh, something like that. Uh, and the test can be add employee.spec.ts, right? Uh, that's it. Now you could, you could do import um, or you could just start with test. Um, uh, and this is, is import from parent test. Um, and then add employee. Um, yeah. So now I'll just paste this. So I'm just loading the URL. Um, I'm filling this. I don't have to enter this. I don't have to click this. Um, enter username, enter password, login button, pin menu, add employee, placeholders, um, first name, tab is not needed. Click is not needed here. Um, this is one of the locators that we could improvise, um, but then I don't have to click on fill. I just can directly fill, uh, save, click on save. And then I want to make this as an R session, okay? So since, since that is a, uh, you know, a kind of widget that comes and disappears quickly, um, I do write it myself. So expect, um, so I want to wait for get by text and this. So success, I don't have to use this successfully saved. I don't think it's complete. So I'll just use regular expression. I am not worried about uh, the casing. Uh, again, guys, um, you know, use, don't use to be to the and all that. Use uh, web first associations like this. And I'm gonna write this, right? So yeah, everything looks good. Uh, the only problem is we have this um, very poor locator here. Uh, we'll see if we could improve it. Uh, so let's go ahead and do NPX Playwright 
uh, test hyphen hyphen header. We didn't add any kind of loading. We didn't do any sort of stuff. No magic, but then the whole thing will work absolutely fine. So only problem is the employee ID already exists. So it didn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna uh, terminate this and just replace with 965 something like that or run it again. This time it should pass. Again, yes, if you notice, we have created a test within a fraction of a second and everything passed. Why do you even need a page object model here? What are you going to achieve here? We 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 basically have some T lines of code. I know it's not as readable as if you have a page object model, but then the amount of efforts that involved in creating the page layers, creating the methods, and performing all that stuff is not really worth it. But then we will we will also cover how we could do that. But you know, in my opinion, uh, we have tried this in our office. And the developers doesn't find really comfortable using page object model because it's not a design pattern that is everyone understood across the world. So, so yeah. So in my opinion, we don't need that, but then we'll also cover. It. So one one problem is this locator is not really good. If it is my office project, what we normally do is we'll go ahead and create a locator for it. We'll we'll create a uh, placeholder. Um, so, so this is PIM, right? And add employee. And employee ID is the one, right? So uh, if you go and inspect here, um, it doesn't have anything, right? So in, in, in my office project, what we normally do is we'll add a um, placeholder here, uh, like for other, we have uh, stuff, or we will we'll add an area label like employee ID so that we will find the element using um, a get by label. Again, guys, don't use page dot locator until unless it is needed. Okay, use get by placeholder, get by roles. Uh, this is how one real user would interact with your application. Get by text, user would re really see, um, you know, uh, what displayed on the page. Uh, they don't care about IDs, they don't care about names and other attributes. So try to avoid using CSS and Xbox, right? So now. After doing this, uh, we could also add more tests. Uh, uh, so what we can also do is, um, let's go ahead and create a page layer. But then it's gonna take a little bit of time, so we will cover that in the next video. I'll see you guys in another great video. Uh, thank you, Bob.